Hey friends, it's Cynthia and Azalea from Green Girl Studios. Hello. Today we would like to show you how to do some painting on our fine pewter pendants and beads with these ultimate paints. Let's get started. All right, so here's a few things that we painted earlier in the day. This is a little pendant. Here's another one. These are on fine pewter and they are available on our website. The paints are very durable and they don't need any kind of sealant. You can see I have this one in my pocket and it has a little bit of uh, the highlights are rubbed down, but I think it adds a lot to the piece. All right. so the first thing you wanna do is wipe down your piece to get any oils or grease or anything from your hands. And so you wanna use some rubbing alcohol. You can pour a little on this. You can get it pretty opaque. See that? I just did this a second ago and it should dry mm. pretty fast. It does. It dries very fast. So I'm going to wipe these down real fast. This also helps the paint adhere. If you have anything on the, on the piece, any kind of oils, it could possibly resist. So if you have any trouble getting your paint to stick, maybe it needs to be wiped but off One first. of the key things about this paint is you do not want to go and use any kind of too much water. So a lot of the methods that we'll be using will be dry brush. So what I'm gonna do, let's see, which one should I do? I wanna do this little head. All right, so I'm gonna use, oh, that doesn't work. I'm gonna get a little bit of the white. Oh, that's the glaze. Oh, glaze. And there's a little ball inside there to help you mix it. You want this paint really well mixed. It's water soluble, but it behaves a little more like an enamel, like those tester enamels. They dry very fast, so you want to move quick when painting these. So, like I said, this is there's no water on this brush. It just dry, it's just a dry brush, and I'm going to use the edge of the brush to gently apply the paint. And if you can see, I'm kind of using it like a paddle almost, just dragging it across. And this is going to give me a very thin layer. I don't want to make it too thick where the paint covers up the detail. What you want to do is lightly add it, like you're kind of pressing it onto the surface. That way you have all the darks popping through. Let's see. So if it gets stopped up, you can always use something to poke in there and, and dig it out a little easier. sure I'm in focus and this stuff dries very fast yeah this gives it a good background if you want to put other colors on it does have a little bit of an odor but it's not very strong like the testers paint you don't want this to dry on your brush because it'll be really hard to get off this paint sticks to just about anything but, well, dry things. I don't think it would stick to like a wet surface. So that's a very thin coat. I kind of like when the piece has a little bit of the metal showing through, so I don't try to put too thick of a layer. This means the layer will be a little less stable than one that you add like a lot of coats, but I think it looks good this way. I don't mind having a little bit of the pewter show from behind. All right, I think that looks good. Looks like enough of that color. I'm gonna rinse my brush out. Now between, if you, when you rinse your brush out, you want to make sure that you dry it really well and I'm pushing it all the water. Right. Now I'm gonna let that coat sit for a second. In the meantime, I'm gonna pick another one. How about this? I think this one will look great. So with these colors, okay, let's see. With these five colors, you can pretty much make any color. You have your primaries and black and white. And so with those, you can make just about anything. So I'm gonna make it kind of a brown. And to do that, I need a little bit of red. Now, these dry really fast, so you don't want to squeeze too much out on your palette, which is what I'm using are little lids. So, you know, you can kind of recycle. All right, so to make a nice brown, I'm gonna make an orange first. Let's see, red and yellow to make this orange. And then by adding a little bit of blue, you get a brown. 
and you just add until you're satisfied with the color. If you want, you can add a touch of black if you want to give it a darker look. Because this is a little plummy, so I just added a little touch of that black to give it a little more depth. Now, what was I going to paint brown? Oh, I was going to paint this root baby. All right, so again, I'm using the edge of the brush, kind of like this. Let's see how I'm doing that. Instead of the tip. You can go on the tip, but it just takes longer. So I'm just using the, the long side of the brush to really get the paint on in a nice, thin layer. And if you do thinner layers, the upside to that is you can add more, and it adds depth to the, to the piece. I feel like it just looks better. And you're also not covering up all of the detail. If you go too thick too fast, you end up kind of camouflaging all of your color or all of the details. So it's kind of a good way to move is just go in light, thin layers. And I have that. I also like to paint and dip the colors as I go. So what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of the white here and I'm not gonna mix it on this as much and just sort of hit the highlighted areas. That kind of blends on the surface because it's not quite dry. So you get almost, it's a way to blend. And it really makes the details pop. Maybe a little green in there would look good. If I don't like a color, I could always paint right over it. All right, so I think I'll go and make the last, the his little sticks more green. So they're greenish brown now, but I wanna make them a more saturated green color. And maybe even a lighter green than that at the very tips. Yeah, that looks good. I think they, you can really see the details when you paint. And it's really fun and relaxing to do. I must say I've painted several of these. So that part's a little bluer than I would like, so I'm gonna go over it with a little more green, maybe a powdery color green. Is that too green, I wonder? A little too green. Let's try to correct that. And make a tan. Make an orange and then mix it with this green. So it dries really fast. So if you're gonna do that, you kinda of have to mix another, another batch of colors if it starts to get tacky. But it's no worry, you can see I can just cover that up. So that's how he looks. If I want to, I can go back in and add more, or I can leave it as is. And this, once it's dry, it's very, very durable paint. You might get a little bit of some of the highlights being kind of rubbed See down. how, ooh, you know what would be a good one to paint is this one. Oh, yeah, I'm painting a ring. This is brass, and it also works well painted. Oh yeah, so, I'm painting on a brass octopus ring. Here, let's see, update that and see what your what yours looks like. That looks great, Azalea. Thank you. Very good. Now, if you don't like, you can also, with a brass ring, if you don't want it to, if your skin turns with uh, copper, because brass has a high copper content, you can always paint the inside with clear, and that will make it so that it's not as, uh, it'll make a barrier. And you probably notice that you don't need a lot of paint. Yeah, these are a lot of fun to paint. If you're interested, we have these paints on the website. Just GreenGirlStudios.com. GreenGirlStudios.com. Don't need a lot. You really don't. And I'm gonna point this and then try and get in there and do those little bitty eyes. That looks pretty cute. Hopefully I can just paint the whole face. I think it looks good that way. That is so cute. And there's also a lot of the brass showing through. So now I'm thinking, I have this pigment powder right here. You can kind of see it. I'm gonna add a little clear. Oh, I was just about to do the exact same thing. Mm. Cause some of this pigment pigment powder has uh, like a pink tint to it. So it's gonna look really good. Extra, extra good on the butterfly and the octopus. Well, let's get where they can see yours. There, that looks good. So you could just grab some of the pigment powder. There's some already dusted over here, and this is from Pearl X. So it. Oh, it's right here. Oh, nice. And then mix it in. You can see that it makes a very sheer color. So if you want to add color, you can add just. A, I'm gonna add a little white to this to show, demonstrate it. 
See how it gives it a very pale tint. Just add that to there. Just drag that across the top. And this generally dries a kind of a matte color, so the shine is a nice way to add a little bit of luminosity to the piece. All right, who else? What, oh, almost forgot this guy. So I'd like to paint, let me see if that paint is, I'm gonna have to get a little bit more red and blue. Now in the past, I have sprayed my palette with water to kind of extend the life of the paint but um, that seems like it works okay, but you don't want to get too much water because then what happens is it kind of breaks down the surface and it's not as durable. And I mixed a little bit of this pale blue. And I'm gonna go around this eye. And I'm using the edge, if you see, I'm using the flat part of the brush. I'm not going in as like, like a spotter, but dragging it across like this. And not just the tip, but the whole side of the brush. So there's that. Now let's get a little bit of this and make a pink. We'll go around the edge of the mouth with the pink. And hopefully it doesn't look scary. <laughs> Now, if it does look scary or oh, horrendous, gone. guess what? You can go over it. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off because I find that terrifying. <laughs> I don't like it. And this, this white's still a little bit, it still has a little bit of life to it. So I'm gonna go over top of that. And see that? If it looks like you don't like it, guess what? You can go over top of it. That's a good, that's a good thing. And you can't even, you can, all, you can still see where I have it painted, that color, but it's not as noticeable as like smeared lipstick look that it was a minute ago. <laughs> I know it was pretty horrendous. I finished mine, I added Pearl Lights Powder. Oh, didn't I show that? I added some of the pink tinted glittery Pearl Lights Powder and now she has a cute little sheen to her. I'm very pleased with this. That brass does paint really well. Okay, so one thing I wanna point out is that if you try to wipe, if you add some paint to an area and you don't like it and you're like, uh, what I do? And you try to wipe it. What's gonna happen is you're gonna take off. Let's see if I can get that to focus. See, if you try to do that and I wipe it still, well, it's not doing it now, but if, if you add a wet part of paint, I'll show, show that. Now let it sit for a second and say you're like, uh, gross. And then you wipe it, you end up taking off. You can take off a lot of the paint. I guess that could be one way if you really didn't like it, you could just put some more of this paint and remove it and it'll peel itself off. So be mindful of that. It's fun to add layers to this and keep going over it. But once this is on there, like if it's sat for a while, you're not going to be able to budge it. But since I just put that on, it's a little easier to remove. So that's this piece. Go in and paint some more of the back. Let's go that pink there. And we'll go every other petal. And that's how that one looks. And if you let that sit, it'll dry nicely and it'll be very permanent. Or you can make it even more permanent if you put it in a little oven, a polymer clay oven, or just a regular oven for like 15 minutes. And it'll really bake it on. Because I believe this is an epoxy-based paint. So you can get a lot of, uh, you can get make it very permanent that way. All right. You want to show any of the other part of that, Azalea? This looks great. Thanks. I am now painting that our, um, fan favorite consider the flowers cross so it looks like a little um, tombstone i guess i'm mm -hmm. painting the green bits now and then i'll i uh, painted the whole thing black except for the back and um then i dry brushed it with white to make it look like stone around the edges and then now i'm doing the green bits all right thank you friends for joining us while we painted some pieces today here's some of what we did here's azalea she made this little tombstone looking pendant in her ring and i did this this. this. You can see it's a fast, fun way to decorate your metal beads. You can also use this on wood, glass, plastic, ceramic, a whole load of different kinds of pieces. Thank you guys for joining us today. We had a wonderful time. If you'd like to see more of our work, follow us on Instagram, 
under Green Girl Studios or Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Yeah. We're going to uh, we're gonna practice and get better at making these videos. Hopefully we can crank out some more soon. Thank you guys for joining us today. Goodbye.